Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. So I've had four or five shops in my lifetime, and if there's one thing that's always true, it's that space is at a premium. There's just never enough of it. I don't care how big or small your shop is, you're always gonna be looking for more space. And I recently put these two uh, cabinet units in down here. I got a great deal on these used, um, and this is where I have my milling machine and my metal cutting bandsaw that I also covered on this channel uh, a bit ago. And I used to have this guy here sitting over here. It's in front of the garage doors now. The problem with that is I can't get stuff into the shop uh, anymore. Uh, I do generally work on larger stuff in the center bay here. Um, but it is nice to be able to get smaller stuff like I would bring the mini bike in over here if I'm working on parts for it uh, or just other stuff like that. Um, also, the height of this guy is now shorter than this. And I've got this hydraulic lift cart uh, over here too. Um, so I can't really, even if I put this guy on wheels, I can't get it over here out of the way without moving the cart too. And I'm not gonna be able to move the cart if I have something parked in the center bay. Right now this car is sitting really far back because I'm working on it and I wanted access to the front. So ideally, I'd be able to roll this hydraulic cart underneath. I already measured and width-wise it will fit. Uh, you can see there, uh, this, well, it's hard to, maybe it's hard to see from the framing of the video, but this width here will fit between the width of the legs uh, down there. It's just, it's too low. So I'm thinking I could kill a couple birds with one stone here. Um, I'd like to get this guy on wheels so I can move it around the shop. Like if I'm actively working on something on the mill over here, it would be nice to have this guy closer as a work surface. Um, and I'd also like to be able to roll it in over there. Um, sort of on top of that hydraulic lift cart to be able to get stuff in through these these bay doors So that's the idea. That's what I'm thinking is that we get some wheels underneath this uh, And get it raised up now one of these cabinets came on this rolling base. This is just a piece of uh, Folded sheet steel that's painted to match and had these four casters on it I think we can put these four casters down on this guy here. So I think the first step is to see if we can use these wheels off that rolling base and also to see how much higher we need to go with this until we can slip the cart underneath. I do very conveniently have two um, small scissor jacks here. I use these for working on motorcycles. Uh, I think we could pop one of those on either end, bring this guy up and get it at just the height that we need um, to slip that hydraulic cart underneath. So let's do that. All right, not high enough yet, so let's, uh, let's keep going up. All right, that's probably about the height that I wanna be because there's gonna be some variation in the height of the garage floor here, depending on where these guys are sitting. Um, so let me get some measurements of how high that is off the ground and we'll see how tall of a riser block we need off of these, uh, these wheels. All right, it looks like five and a half inches is where I wanna be. Now you can see that we have a pretty substantial gap here underneath the, uh, the wheel. So I think we need, uh, I believe these are sitting at uh, four and a half. Yeah, I think these are four and a half. So we're gonna need an inch and a half riser block. So what I need to do is essentially just design a block that is gonna sit between uh, the caster wheel and this base that's an inch and a half thick and has holes for the bolts uh, to go through. And then we're gonna need four of those. All right, 
Got one done. I think what I'm gonna do is, now that we know the height that we need to work with, it's a little bit tippy on these, uh, these two scissor jacks. It's gonna be tough to work on the rear ones as well. I think I'm gonna slip this hydraulic cart underneath and just pick the whole thing up so we can, uh, we can roll it out of here and get it even higher up to work on. All right, now that's nice and high up. Should be a lot easier to work on this uh, as well rather than being down here on my knees. Okay, so I am within the, uh, the, uh, the bolt circle on this guy. And I am within the bolt circle on this guy, so I should be good to go. I'm gonna print uh, three more of these and order some hardware and we can get working. All right, and through the magic of editing, we've got four of these now, and I have the hardware. But I made a stupid mistake. When I designed these, I sized the dimension of this hole to be uh, an exact fit for the bolt. I didn't leave any clearance. Really stupid mistake. Uh, now, I could easily drill these out so that this bolt fits in here. I mean, I can force it in there now. I can thread it in, and it, it sort of clears. I could drill these out a bit to fit, but I made another dumb mistake. So. I didn't realize when I grabbed a wheel to design the, uh, the layout for the riser block that these have two different style bases. Uh, there's two different style wheels here. They both have the same height, uh, but one is a swivel wheel with a lock on it and the other is a fixed one. Now that's what I want. Uh, so that this guy is easier to steer when you're rolling it around. You know, you have, you know, this is, this end is, it's going to pivot on this end. Um, and you know, the other end is gonna be the end that actually uh, you know, moves you know, laterally uh, to swing it around, and then I can lock it in place as well. Problem is, I grabbed this wheel, or one of these, when I designed these plates, and that's why these holes line up perfectly. I grabbed one of these guys when I went to check the fit against these holes down here. So if I grab, well, there's another problem too. Uh, M8 bolts don't clear these holes, even though these holes appear larger because they're slotted. Uh, they do clear these. And of course, this is the wheel I had on my desk when I ordered parts. Um, in addition to that, this wheel with the plate uh, will not work. The, uh, the fasteners, just the M8 bolts uh, will not work. It's too tight. I think I can fix this by ordering um, M6 hardware. So this guy, this guy sits up here like so, and you can see I'm right at the, I'm right at the edge of the bolt circle. And I just, I didn't realize that when I ordered the hardware. So I need to go with a smaller bolt uh, to get that clearance back. So I'm going to order some M6 bolts. I'll bring it back. All right. M6 bolts have arrived, but I've got some bad news. I test fit that with this plate, assumed that was going to solve the problem never tried to line up with this plate. And with this plate, my bolts are too close to the, uh, the welds here. It doesn't, um, it's a really tight fit on this one. Uh, the, the, the plates welded on slightly different over there on that leg. It doesn't clear on that one at all. I, I am <laughs> I'm besides myself here in frustration with not taking the time to actually test things before I move on to the next step. Sometimes it's the simplest of projects. Like, I mean, come on, four riser blocks for this workbench. You're probably wondering why I'm even covering this on this channel. Uh, but I thought this would just be a quick, easy project to do. And I it was actually just gonna be part one of this video, but I think it's gonna be the whole thing now because it's a perfect example of slow down, take all the measurements with all the pieces and test fit everything before you keep moving forward. I've now got four riser blocks that are probably going in the garbage because what I'm realizing looking at this is I should have designed the riser block to be the same as this foot with the same uh, bolt circle on it and then made my adjustments on these plates if I needed to. These wheels, uh, these caster plates were never gonna bolt up 
uh, to this with any standard hardware. I can sort of clear with M6 hardware on three of these feet. One doesn't clear due to where it's welded on uh, to the leg, um, but in any case, the, the actual diameter of the hole is too big to use just the bolt head. The bolt head's gonna drop right through there, and I can't get a washer on um, anyway, yeah, I could custom cut a custom piece there, I guess, as a, as a washer. But again, the reality is I should have just designed these pieces here to be an exact replica of the bottom of this foot and then made my changes to these plates and used the correct hardware. So I'm now going to go draw a riser block that matches the footprint of this guy and we'll go from there. All right, simplest project on earth, take 17. Um, <laughs> so as you can see, uh, this very nicely matches the, uh, the layout here on the, on the foot. Basically, this just extends uh, this foot now an additional inch and a half down, and we can make our adjustments as needed uh, on those caster plates. And we're going to need to. Uh, for, this to uh, for this to work, we are going to need to use M8 bolts, standard washers, and I'm probably going to need to modify... Uh, the caster plates a bit on the bandsaw uh, to work. Uh, definitely for sure, uh, these ones with the smaller bolt circle. You can see if I set these guys on here, you can see this was never going to work um, without making some modifications. It's deceiving. It looks like a better fit uh, from the way that it sits on with depth uh, when you're looking at it, when you're eyeballing it down here, but you can see how far off we are from that ever working properly. Uh, without uh without modifying this so all right let's uh let me get this moved let me get this whole thing moved out of the way because it's blocking the bandsaw and uh we'll modify all of these plates to work within the uh the bolt circle uh, of these new riser blocks okay for these rotating ones uh you can see we're pretty far off the bolt pattern here particularly for using uh, a full-size bolt a little bit hard to hold it in a way you can see all of them i think what i'm gonna have to do on these is just cut uh, with the bandsaw, I'll make two cuts. Basically, extend the the hole uh, into a slot uh, straight out in this direction um, and in this direction for this one uh, for all of them. And I'll just use a large fender washer uh, on the bottom of this, so we're still clamping around a decent amount of this face. Uh, I mean, the, all the weight's going to be just bearing on the plate itself. We just need to make sure this is affixed tight enough that it can't get out of here as we're rolling around and hit like a seam in the floor or something like that. So. You know what? That guy's tight too. Did I screw up yet again? Did these wheels even work? Uh, oh, there we go. The lock was just partially on. Yeah, it's fine. All right, so it looks like it should be good, but I'm starting to learn my lessons on this project. Uh, as simple as this seems, I'm gonna go test fit and fully mount one of these before I modify the other one. All right, so that does look like it's going to work for these. Um, I did need to be a little bit finicky with how I get it adjusted at the bottom just so we're evenly over all of the, uh, the cuts in the plate, um, but that should be good. So I'm going to go ahead and make the slots in the other pivoting wheel and uh, we'll get the other side on. All right, this one looks good too. Now we need to drill the holes out larger in the other ones. And same thing, I'm gonna do one first, make sure that it really does fit 
and then we'll do the second one. All right, so I don't think I'm gonna try and drill these out. What I noticed is the, uh, the bolt actually does fit through, yeah, see it fits through that one. So these are really close. And the other thing is when I cut the slots in the other casters, I think I actually somewhat dulled the, uh, the blade on the bandsaw. It seems that these edges are hard. Uh, I can't imagine that this is a particularly high quality of, of steel, but I'm wondering if maybe in the process of punching these plates out, uh, it hardened uh, the, uh, the edges. Um, so I think this is probably going to be a challenge to drill this out just a tiny bit. I think the, uh, it's going to be, even in a, in a vise, I think it's going to be tough to keep it straight. Uh, so what I'm thinking is I'm just going to hit these edges with a carbide burr, um, each of them, since I have to take off so little uh, little material here uh, to fit. Like it's fits in that one, really close to fitting in that one. Same thing. Yeah, I mean, in fact, I can actually, if I turn it, the threads will put it through. So it's real close. So I'm just going to hit these with a carbide burr off camera, and uh, I'll bring you back. All right, I removed just the tiniest amount of material from all these, and... Um, Goes through just fine on all of them now, so let's uh, let's get one of these bolted up. All right, so if we didn't screw up again, we should be able to let this guy down now. Roll out this hydraulic cart and then be able to uh, roll that cart out from underneath of it and roll this table around and hopefully get that hydraulic cart in from the side. So let's give it a try. All right, so that goes under nicely. It is close. Uh, I tried to leave myself about a quarter inch and it looks like I have closer to about an eighth of an inch. Uh, but the real story is gonna be whether it goes under uh, over there where I wanna be able to essentially roll the table kind of over top of this cart when it's stored at the side. So let me get all the chips vacuumed off the floor from when I ran the bandsaw and we'll get this back in place and see if it all fits. Okay, so there's two functionalities here that I was hoping to get out of this. Uh, number one being able to rolled this guy this way to be able to get something in these doors. So let's try that first. Yep, that's pretty good. Even without moving the hydraulic cart, I now have access to be able to walk into here, um, basically half a, a door bay width uh, to get stuff in and out. And I can move that hydraulic cart over further um, even with a vehicle in here, uh, just to get that out of the way. The other thing I wanted to be able to do was be able to bring that table over here next to say the milling machine so that if I'm working here at the milling machine, um, I have another work surface uh, right next to me to be able to set stuff down on and to just kind of work from other than just the countertop here. Let's try that. Yep, and that works out nicely as well. And realistically, I can roll this guy around anywhere now in the uh, in the garage. So, uh, yeah, I can't believe the number of screw ups for such a simple project, but I am very happy with the the outcome. Um, since we jumped around in design and the original design didn't work, let's go take a look at the design, um, the final design on these riser blocks, um, specifically to talk about the things that I did in slicing to be able to strengthen these prints to be able to support the weight. All right, and here is that model, and I've opened it up in the slicing software. I use Simplify 3D. Uh, the stuff I'm gonna show you, it doesn't really matter which slicer that you use. We're, we're gonna be talking about some pretty simple concepts for the strength of the, uh, the print. So your controls might not be in the exact same place, but you should have the same configuration options. And this is V2 of the design. Uh, earlier in the video, I showed V1 of the design, which was the, the smaller version of this uh, with just the straight through holes. Uh, this is the uh, the oblong uh, holes and is the second design. I know I didn't show the design for this, but it's such a simple 
uh, you know, model. I, I didn't think it was necessary to show you the design twice. Uh, so getting into the strength of this part. So a lot of people will tell you, oh, we'll just increase the infill. Uh, and they don't pay attention to any of the other things going on with the print. And since 3D prints are not solid, you know, we look at this, it's a solid object, right? Uh, but we know that this isn't actually going to print solid. Now, I think the the one exception is if you do print with 100% infill, well, then yeah, I mean, you should end up with a fairly solid object. But number one, that's going to take an enormous amount of time to print. And number two, if you don't have your flow uh, exactly correct, you're going to run into issues, uh, particularly since most people have their flow set that they're probably over extruding just a little bit, which isn't necessarily a bad thing for most prints. Uh, but if you're over extruding even by, you know, like half a percentage point um, and you're trying to do 100% infill, you're going to run into issues. Your, your nozzle is just going to be smear plastic around on the surface because there's no place for that excess uh, material to go. And really printing 100% solid is not the best way to get strength in your prints anyway. Even if you set the amount of time required and the amount of plastic that you're going to go through, um, you know, to do that. So let's take a look at the options that we have. So here we go with, uh, with infill. So infill percentage, I'm at 10% here by default. I am going to want to do more than 10% infill, uh, but that's not the thing that is going to have the greatest impact of, on strength on this part. So actually, before we do anything, let's just let's slice this and take a look at what this looks like inside. So you can see the print is made up of uh, a couple different things here. If we go all the way down to the bottom, we have our bottom layers. Okay, and you can see a number of those. We have our infill here in orange. Uh, we have outer layers here. It kind of looks like we have uh, three in places, but really that's the, the infill touching um, sometimes, not always. So we have two outer layers here and then the infill. Uh, same thing for any of these uh, cutouts here or any other areas where there's going to be walls in your print. Um, and then if we go right up to the top, we have top layers as well. We really need to tweak all these things if we want a strong print. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So uh, I would go in here, if I was trying to make this a strong part, I would go in first, I'd, I'd up my infill percentage to at least 15%. If I really wanted a super high strong part, I'd probably go to say 20%. Why not more? Well, for this model, that's not really gonna give me any more strength. Um, well, I guess it, it, it will to an extent, right? If I crank this number way, way up, let's see if we put this all the way up to, I don't know, maybe let's call it 75%. And we take a look at this. Well, at 75%, we have so much plastic uh, in here that no matter what we do with the rest of the settings, this is still gonna be a fairly strong part, but a couple of things are happening here. Well, let's see, our material weight, we're at 390.62 grams. So assuming this is a one kilogram roll, uh, we're not even gonna get three of these guys out of a single roll of filament. We're just, we're wasting a ton of, of material. Uh, so, and that's not even going, for, yeah, I'll tell you what, let's just for the heck of it, let's make this infill percentage 100%. Yeah, we, we now, we're not even going to get two of these now out of a, a single roll of uh, a single one kilogram roll of filament. So let's go back. Let's, let's be reasonable. We're going to go uh, on the infill, we'll go 20%. And the other things that I'm going to change are going to be on layer here, bottom solid layers. Now you really need to think about your layer height here and then just imagine um, for at least your bottom how thick you want this to be. We're gonna do something different for the top and I'll, I'll get to that in a second, but bottom solid layer is five. My layer height's 0.1 millimeter. So that's gonna give me half a millimeter in thickness at the bottom. Well, I want more than that. I'd like it to be at least a millimeter thick on the bottom. So I'm gonna up that to 10. Top solid layers. So same thing, but remember that these top solid layers, they're not laying down on the bed. They're not laying down on a smooth surface. They're laying down on top of your infill. So you need to think about your infill. If you have, you know, that, that crazy example scenario where we had 75% infill, well, I mean, you're probably gonna have a solid layer on the top by the time you get to the second or third layer. Even your first layer is not gonna look terrible on the top. Uh, but at 20% infill, it's gonna lay down a couple different layers until we get to what looks like a smooth surface. And that smooth surface is also a strong surface. So I'm gonna need, as thick as I want this to be, I'm gonna need to add probably two to three layers to that 
to get the same amount of strength as I would have on the bottom. So top solid layers, I'm gonna go 13. Outline perimeters. This is probably the single most important thing in having a strong part. And I see a ton of people are printing with an outline perimeter of one just because it gets their prints done faster and they're, you know, at some point in time, they set it up like this. They weren't concerned about necessarily strength of a part. They just, you know, wanted it to come out, come out quickly and look good. And, you know, yeah, if, if, you, if strength isn't important to you, you probably get away with one outline on a lot of your prints. But if strength is important to you, you're going to want to up this. And again, think about your, you know, the rest of the parameters of the print. Each outline is going to be the width that you're extruding. So I have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle in here. So if I do two outline perimeters, that's going to get me, you know, just shy of, uh, of, of, you know, one millimeter of width. I want this to be a nice, strong part. So I'm going to go to four. Now let's slice this and take a look. Well, first of all, uh, material weight 168, well, call it 169 grams. So, you know, now we're going to get all four of these uh, out of a single roll of filament and still have material left over. Uh, and it's also going to take way less time to print. Our, our build time, we're at 0.1 millimeters, so this is still going to be a rather slow print. I'm probably going to up this to 0.2 millimeter um, here, but let's just take a look at the part now. Ah, some pretty big differences here. So it's hard to see the, the top and bottom uh, layers here in the preview, but we have quite a few more solid layers at the bottom. So we're going to have a nice thick solid layer at the bottom of this part. And, and same thing at the top, we're going to have a nice thick solid top. Now what this doesn't really give us a preview on is see, when we get to that first solid layer, it's, it's going to draw it like it's a perfectly smooth layer. That's not going to be the case. Remember, we're laying that material down on top of this infill. And that's why if you've ever had a print where you can sort of see the infill through the top, uh, you didn't have enough solid top layers. What's happening is you're, you're getting low spots in your print where there's the holes in that, in that infill. You've got to lay down on 20%. I would say you're probably going to put down three layers until you have a smooth top, uh, which isn't going to be very strong. Uh, we did 13, so we're, we're kind of sucking up three layers until we get to a smooth surface, and then we've got a solid 10 uh, that are all going to be, uh, you know, good adhesion to each other and giving us a fair amount of strength. Uh, but the single most important thing is those outlines. Look at what we've done to all of the, the features in this part here. Now we have four solid layers, so, you know, over one and a half millimeters uh, of thickness uh, at all of the outside edges, and on these uh, oblong holes here through the part. And that is what is going to give us the majority of the strength of this part. In fact, I would argue I could probably take the infill down to 5%. And this is still going to be a really strong part because these, just these sections here and this outer part are going to transfer that load. Uh, from the big plate on that table down to those casters. And we have plenty of thickness here in the outer walls to keep this guy from trying to parallelogram, um, you know, and collapse under that weight. I may do in the future a video uh, showing some comparisons of strength. Maybe we'll use the hydraulic press and just take a look at the pressure that we can achieve uh, in trying to crush these with various different settings. Uh, the last thing I will say that is going to affect your part strength is, well, two things, your layer height and the the volume of plastic that you're putting down. And maybe you could just say it's the volume of plastic that you're putting down. Uh, there's been an open argument in the community kind of forever as to what's stronger, uh, thicker layers or thinner layers. And for me, I have found that thinner layers tend to be stronger, but I don't know that it's really the layer height that it's the, that's at the root of it. I think if you're putting down thicker layers and you're going slower, so you are heating up that base material underneath the layer you're putting down and not trying to extrude that plastic too quickly, I think it can be quite strong. Uh, the challenge there is if you could put down the same volume of plastic with a thinner layer and go faster, you're going to have a better surface finish. Uh, and still complete the print in around the same amount of time. If you're trying to go to like a 0.2 or 0.3, um, you know, or somewhere in the middle layer height, and you're trying to maintain the same speed, you're putting on a lot more plastic. You're, you're, you're extruding material a lot quicker, and you're not dwelling in the same spot as you're putting it down. So you're not going to have as good adhesion between layers. 
I tend to just print most things at 0.1 millimeter. Uh, I'm patient. You know, I just wait till they're done. Now, this is a case where that's that's just going to take too long. If we did this, if we actually did this at 0.1 uh, millimeter, let's see. Well, I wouldn't knock the infill down that far. So let's put the infill back up to 15%. So yeah, we're looking here at um, between 15 and 16 hours. Now multiply that by the four of these I need to make. That's just too darn long. Um, I printed the ones that were used here in the video uh, with a 0.2 millimeter layer height, which I think is a good, uh, it strikes a good compromise um, between time and strength in these. If my load was not compressive on these, I would probably have just taken the time to print them at a 0.1 millimeter layer height or at a 0.2 at a slower speed. Uh, by speeding up the, the, the strength that you're going to take away or, or the, 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 the type of strength of the part that, that is going to suffer the most is layer adhesion. Uh, you can see in this type of part, it just it doesn't matter. It's, it's compressive strength. Um, there's not going to be the only side loading on these is going to be when I'm rolling this thing around. Maybe if I heat, hit like a you know a crack in the floor or something like that. But keep in mind, this thing is still compressed. Uh, we're bolting. This is sandwiched between the plate on the caster and that plate on the bottom. So even from a side load perspective, it's the four bolts that are keeping this guy uh, together versus the uh, the layer adhesion. So. Okay, so hopefully that was useful. Uh, if you want to see more stuff like this, uh, kind of me geeking out on the engineering uh, aspect of, uh, you know, slicing and stuff like that, let me know. Happy to dig into it more in these prints. Um, I'm just kind of taking a guess at the type of stuff that you guys are interested in seeing in each one of these videos. So uh, thanks for tuning in. I did want to mention uh, we actually hit a thousand subscribers on this channel uh, in the last, uh, actually, I think it happened uh, New Year's Eve. So uh, before the, the year flopped over. So Guys, thank you for, for your support uh, since I started the channel. It means, uh, it means it's huge to think that there's a thousand people that are following this channel and, and, and checking out these, uh, these prints every week. So uh, thank you very much. If this is your first time checking out a video on this channel, uh, I do a new video like this every single week that features you know, something I've designed uh, or a design I've seen in the community that solves a specific problem or just makes something better. So consider hitting that subscribe button if that's the type of thing you're, you're into. And if you enjoyed this video, please take a second and hit that like button. It does two things. Uh, it's going to tell YouTube to show this video to more people uh, so that hopefully the channel can continue to grow. And it's also going to tell me that you liked this content and you want to see more stuff uh, you know, like this. So guys, thanks again, and I will catch you next Friday. Mm -hmm.